Yeah, we've got the blinks. Left and right is basically done through um, the morph target tool. So we uh, work back in a left blink using the, the morph brush, same thing with the right. And the other thing is, you know, with a lot of these, like the wide narrow, you can have a left-sided smile, a right-sided smile. Uh, the upper lip moving up on just one side. So we actually, when you create the extended set, it's actually just about creating left and right side versions of the more symmetrical versions of these things. So this set expands out very quickly just by using the morph brush and, and dialing in one side and then the other side. So you have a, a symmetrical and a left and right. Uh, we'll take a look at blinks. Um, yeah, the brow squeeze. So that's basically when you have some wrinkling, uh, the brows are kind of squeezing in towards the middle, towards the uh, bridge of the nose there. Uh, the brows made up is more like a curious position where the middle part is moving up. Brows made down is a bit more uh, either serious thought or anger. <laughs> the brows out, so this is more the outer region, not the middle region where the two brows meet, but more the outer brow where the brow ridge is. That moving up in surprise or moving down again in serious thought or anger. Um, so we'll take a look at those in ZBrush quickly. Um, so for blinks, I usually have my, my eyelids divided into two polygroups, again, for quick masking, ease of use. Um, I will say this, I generally find, now this model doesn't have it, but I would say, you know, whatever the edge, there should generally be one loop that forms the, uh, the sort of hard edge of the eyelid. So I would say, you know, in this case, I can't really alter it. It's, I've already started doing blend shapes, but I would say, you know, maybe this loop over here or one of these other loops like this one here should be the, the eyelid. And I, I generally like to keep a nice firm crease on those lids and some, sometimes on the, on the edge of the lips as well to help define the, the lip transition. But in this case, we'll just proceed with the eyes as they are. So I'm going to do the blink first. Um, oops, I already got a layer. I'm going to name this blink. Okay, so for the blink, uh, very simply, again, I will um, mask the upper lids. Usually the upper lids will move quite a bit more than the lower. So I'm gonna just paint this back in quite a bit more. And then control tap on it once to blur it. And again, I wanna protect the lower lid. So I'm gonna just remask that area. Now a lot of people will just kind of do this where they drop the lid. <laughs> uh, the lids don't necessarily drop, they tend to rotate. And I tend to put, put the pivot point you know, back about a centimeter. So we have this sort of a extension kind of coming out. Um, yeah, I might even push that pivot point just a little bit further back. So uh, the other thing that you may have, depending on the realism of the model or the design, is there might be an upper eyelid fold. So if you're more Caucasian, Asian people tend to have less of an upper eyelid fold, just based on the broad anatomy. Um, but also in cartoony characters, you may not have a fold where the upper eyelid uh, kind of meets the brow. So usually in those cases, I would also have that sort of um, extend and stretch outwards. Okay, so I'm going to just try to smooth this back a little bit. Again, if you had a harder, more defined ridge, you'd want to really make sure you maintain that, that loop and don't smooth it into oblivion or, or lose its sort of defining shape and characteristics. Uh, I probably will also push some of this back and in a bit because it's stretching thinner. So just again, tucking this back and in a bit. Um, there. And I'll hold Alt to pull this out. So again, like I said, maintaining the the thickness of the eyelid, it's it's sort of relative position to the eyeball. And uh, let's control tap or control clear the mask and I'm gonna just isolate the lower area as well. Again, protecting the corners a bit, control tap once and then again, I'll adjust my mask through some painting. So you really wanna make sure your area of effect is pretty, pretty well isolated to that lower eyelid. And as I said, this thing doesn't tend to move around as much. So again, I often use the move brush holding alt so it pulls out right that sort of thickness in a consistent way. 
And then I may just do a little bit of subtle smoothing underneath because there's stretching. We don't want to see it inflate and deflate, but we do want to see it uh, make a nice solid connection with that uh, upper, upper lid. Okay, so just take a look and see if it feels natural. That looks pretty good. All right, we don't want the eyeball either to kind of pull through. So nice, subtle motion. Now the technique I'm going to show you for creating the left and right side is exactly how you do the left and right side smile. Like I said, the, the upper lip up, the upper lip down. Uh, I'm not requiring it for this assignment, but uh, for rigging, you may have to make the expanded set of uh, blend shapes to do asymmetrical work. So to get asymmetrical stuff, you basically need to load the blend shape you want. Uh, delete a morph target, store that morph target, go back to layers, turn that off, create a new one. Again, in this case, I'm going to fill my object with white just to reset that problem. Turn off your symmetry, hit B for brush, M for morph, and zero, sorry, O is the key to get to that brush. And while it's recording, we can just say, all right, let's just pop that blink in for that side. So we'll just name this uh, blink underscore R. You have to think about the character. Looking at it from the character's eyes, it would be the character's right side or right eye. And then we'll uh, do essentially the same thing. Blink underscore L. And again, I'll just make sure that's filled in with color. So I'll turn off the right. Uh, activate the left and record. And then brush that in. So that's very quickly, you know, how you do left and right side. When it comes to things like uh, left and right smile, I'll just show you this quickly as well, or the wide, let's say. So I'd load this, uh, go to morph target again, delete the previous, store the current. So what I tend to do is um, mask, okay, I'll go with that. Let's turn off perspective. So I'd mask a little over halfway. The reason being is that I'm going to control tap it a few times to blur it. And then I could uh, morph in, right, and get a nice blend down the center line. So that masking kind of helps, can help uh, that effect. So then you can get, you know, do left and right side basically this way, okay? And you can still tweak this by, you know, um, if I go back to the default, for example, I might want to blend back to the default a little bit in some areas, so you can kind of use this morph target system that way. Delete and store, and then go back into the recording of this layer, and I might just want to, you know, kind of dial back that strange little angle here. So I'm going to just very subtly work this back a bit, okay? So you get a little smirk. And what's great about this is you can combine this together to get a asymmetrical smile. So you can multiply these things on top of each other as well. Okay, that's just a little side note though about, about um, the asymmetrical stuff. So uh, what's next? The next one, the big one is squint. So squinting is kind of like a, a squeezing of the cheeks and the outer brow region down. And it's basically an amplifier. As I mentioned earlier, it's a way to kind of make the expression seem a little bit more genuine. So I tend to kind of pull mesh down in this direction. So it's kind of coming down here. It's going to bulge out a little bit and it's sliding up along the cheek as well. So I'm going to just kind of get parallel to that cheek if I can and pull some of this stuff up. So we can also work from this angle as well. And then we can uh, use the damn standard brush. So sometimes you'll get a little, you know, depending on the age of the character, you get a little kind of indentation. So I might try to follow the topology in this case and then do a little subtle inflating as well along either side. I don't want to go too far. Oops, I should be doing this in symmetry. Unfortunately, I'm not. So. We'll pretend this is all done in symmetry. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go back just a touch. Okay. Let's 
So a little bit of inflating. Okay, there we go. So you sort of see it's like a, a squeezing of the, the outer brow and upper cheek muscle, right? So you get a bulging. So there's indentation happening here, but then stuff moving out as well. All right, so when you have the wide, unfortunately his teeth are off, which makes him look like an old man, so let's turn those on. Um, so when you combine these things, it, that sort of squinting helps the, um, right, so usually we have a bit of blinking happening. That squinting just helps accentuate the, the smile to be a bit more genuine, right? Okay, so I'll just call this uh, squint. Oops. Having a hell of time spelling today. Squint. There we go. Okay. Um, what are the other ones here? So we're going to look at brow squeeze. So th these are very simple. The eyes, the mouth, I find, tends to need a bit more work because there's a lot of complex interactions between the different shapes in basically the same areas. But with the, the brows, there's a lot of areas that tend to kind of work well in isolation or with very little overlap. So uh, let's now create the uh, brow squeeze. I think it's uh, brows mid in a brow squeeze I'll just call it brow squeeze brow squeeze <clears throat> so this is literally you know you can almost face it from a front view I'm gonna pull this stuff into the middle and you can I often like to see the wireframe as well so pull it into the middle and we're gonna kind of bulge this out a bit and I find it can be helpful for it to be almost a little bit on the lumpy side. Usually we have a couple vertical folds or you might have almost like a dimpled bulging area. Um, so I'll take the inflate brush here and just kind of inflate uh, maybe a couple little spots. And maybe take the damn standard here to create a little crease. So when you see that, you kind of get this little, right? action happening here. So now the character right <laughs> looks very serious. So we get that contraction, right? That's squeezing, but then it's bulging out. When you squeeze something, it has to go somewhere else, right? Like I said, even in cartoony characters, I think it's important to kind of establish that. And you can also decide when to break those rules. So you can have a set of very grounded uh, blend shapes, and then when you get into making your movie, you could you could always add additional blend shapes that go really extreme, go really zany or, or crazy and over the top. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right, brows mid up. So that's again this middle region, right? This this is sort of the region we're talking about. Brows mid, brows squeeze, brows mid up, brows mid down. So I'll go brows. That'll be separate. So that's the outer brows. Uh, brows mid up. Again, I'll have to just fill my object. Brows mid up. So again, I like to kind of get parallel. This stuff is going to slide along, right? There's a brow shape usually here. So we want to kind of slide uh, up. Oops, I'm using inflate. So I should try to slide this up. And again, I, I usually like to sort of see where that's going. So that, that often can look kind of on the sad <laughs> spectrum. Again, when you're dealing with more realistic characters, you do have to consider the bones underneath. You don't want to destroy the bone shape. If you're dealing with more cartoony stuff, you can be a little bit more rubbery in those areas. Um, so just keep that in mind. Right? So if we're taking a look at that. And we can also squeeze the brows still to get ultra sad. <laughs> uh, so that's basically brows mid up. Right? So again, a lot of people say like the, the mouth is the, the driver ex of expression, but the eyes actually enhance or really complete the expression, you know? Okay, so uh, let's go back, brows mid down, brows mid underscore DN down. So um, yeah, let's fill. So again, we're sliding this stuff kind of down over the brow. Okay. 
And again, I, I do tend to see more of a bulge here, so it's going to thin out a bit here and slide down. You have a much more devious <laughs> look to this. And we can also inflate a little bit as well. So I often like to see it inflate. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be careful about my smoothing as well. I want to just dial back some stuff. So, Like I said, you want to see it thin out and, and keep the brow shape underneath, but then kind of create a little bit of a maybe a slight bulge, inf inflated um, bulging area here. Again, I might dial back my smoothing there. And you know, I think this is probably over exaggerated, but I do think sometimes I'll keep exaggerated shapes because they work well at 40, 50, 60%, and it still gives me the option to go beyond. I do think this kind of breaks the realism a little bit. It just, it does look a little strange here. Yeah. So I might just pull in this little region right here. It's a little better. I, th I still think of the extreme is not great, but at 60, 70%, it, it still feels uh, fairly believable and effective. So depending on your character too, if it's more stylized, you can get away with more. If it's more realistic, you can get away with a lot less. It's going to be a lot more subtle for sure. Uh, so we did what? Brows mid up, brows mid down, and then we just need to do the brows outer. So that's the rest of the brow region basically. Brows outer up, brows out down. So... Uh, Brows out, up. I usually start with the up, and let's just do. Uh, oops. All right, just fill object. Okay, so, so the brows outer. That's basically this whole region here, okay? And it can really extend quite a bit high into this area. So again, I'm going to be sliding the brows. So again, I like to think about the underlying anatomy. This thing, this stuff is going to slide up and over the, the kind of bone. You want to maintain the brow, the bony brow ridge there. Okay, and you can, uh, let's just take a look, All right, um, yeah, it's not bad. It does feel like it's sort of sliding over bone, which is pretty good. I think I do need to make sure my outer brow ridge is still in place. I'm going to just hold alt and move some of this stuff out a bit. Just smooth some of this back as well. Now, additionally, you can also kind of create some, you know, if you have enough topology at the base level, you can try to create, again, some wrinkling um, using the damp standard brush, right? You're trying to kind of dig one line in and pucker out another. But uh, that's probably more effective, I would say, in older characters. All right, so you kind of get this effect. Let me just turn the dynamic division back on. A little too exaggerated, so I'm going to just dial that back. Okay. It's kind of a surprise, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so that's browse out up, uh, browse out, browse out down. Now, we can always see if, if the opposite of this works. Now, I think the brows out down, it's sort of kind of there, but it looks very kind of pointy in a way. So I think I'm going to just create my own uh, from scratch. So brows out and down. Again, we want to maintain the structure. So I'm going to just slide the, the upper brow stuff, pull it down. Because this will be more of a stern look. It could be used in anger and aggression as well. Um, so I'm going to now inflate this area. So it's going to kind of pucker below the brow ridge. 
yeah, let's dial back that side parts. Ooh, a little strange. It's like, what is going on, right? <laughs> Suspicious look, squint. <laughs> Probably do a double-sided blink here. Shady. Things are shady. <laughs> so that, that can help. And uh, browse mid up, maybe browse mid down. Devious plotting. So that should give you a wide range of options really for um, creating a wide variety of expressions instead of just having like a handful or even a dozen pre built expressions. It'll give you unique and subtle uh, ability to uh, express and animate through that character.